feel it. Founders Live has had such an impact around the world, it's been surprising to me. It, starting it in Seattle, uh, in 2014, but in 2016 we started expanding to other cities. We're now in 55 cities around the world. We're quickly going to 100. And what we're doing is we're connecting the entrepreneurial communities together on a global platform. And so we're providing, you know, founders and entrepreneurs that are here in Herrera, Zimbabwe, the ability to reach people in other countries. It's our one year anniversary of having held Founders Live here in Harare and we've seen so much impact. Tonight, it will be 30 startups that have pitched and that have um, gotten opportunities to be showcased on a global stage. This was such an important uh, platform for us to bring to Zimbabwe because we have amazing talent that needs to be showcased and find opportunities for incubation, mentorship, investment, and it's 99 seconds to get Zimbabwean startups out there. We basically allow for real estate to be broken down into tiny investable shares for as little as one dollar. Founders Live is a good platform because um, we get to have a lot of exposure, seeing how it is a global uh, event and a global organization, that is a lot of exposure. Tikafo is a local food directory. The purpose of the platform is to connect uh, communities to producers in their community. When you see our presentation, you see the level of technology that we're trying to implement. is amazing technology. And the purpose behind it is to connect the food system in Zimbabwe. If you look at our country, we're very abundant in resources, but somehow we're struggling to feed ourselves. And that's really what we're trying to address as a company. So for that reason, we think we, we should win this prize. So if Founders Live was one image, instead of 99 seconds, this would be our pitch. Now, to explain this further, I could talk of how over 40 billion worth of food is wasted each year, or how complexities in matching demand and supply cause this inefficiency. But the real story here is actually connection. As more Zimbabweans and Africans are coming online, people are trying to use the internet to solve their own problems. In the food sector, people are trying to use social media platforms to connect demand, demand and supply. But that's not what they're built for. That's where Chikafu comes in. At the core of it, Chikafu is a database whose sole purpose is to collect and catalog information on African food systems in a useful manner. An example of what you can do on the platform is search mushrooms Harare, and it'll give you a list of all the mushroom producers in Harare and the exact geolocation codes, enabling you to find the closest producer to you. The platform also facilitates the flow of real-time information to and from the database using WhatsApp, WhatsApp messaging and chatbot technology. So when we initially started this platform, we started with a subscription model, but we quickly had to pivot away from that when we realized that user growth and acquisition was the most important thing for our platform. This ties into our business model, which is based on data monetization and building SaaS tools that offer additional value to users on the platform. So what do we need from you tonight? For tonight, please just visit the website. If you have a food-related business, add it to your business. And lastly, please vote for us. Tonight's prize money is 20,000 in Google Cloud credits. This is something we can actually utilize for our business, as most of our infrastructure is within the Google ecosystem. So my name is Tanaka Tsikira. Those three gents over there are the rest of the Chikafu team. Thank you very much. OK, so are there any questions for Tanaka? Hi, that was a great pitch. Um, good to hear that you're obviously concerned about food and wastage is a big issue. Yeah. I just have a question. You mentioned that you pivoted. So what made you change, I suppose, your strategy? Because you'd focused on a subscription type model and then you pivoted away from that. What caused that? Oh, okay. When we initially started, we were concerned about how we were actually going to make money from the business. So we'd ask people to pay to be on the platform. But then we realized the nature of the platform that we were building the more users that are on the platform, the more valuable it becomes to us and to you. So the platform, we changed it from subscription to free. So you don't have to pay anything. It's similar to how Facebook and Instagram and all these platforms work. You don't have to pay to get in. So we realized we made a mistake and we need to get more users on board. That's why we had to pivot. Interesting presentation. Okay. When you spoke about monetizing data, Cambridge Analytica came to mind. Yeah, definitely. Like instantly. Definitely. Um, can you elaborate? and share with us, I, I believe it's important. You're looking at the audience to vote for you. So yeah. we need to truly understand how you intend to actually monetize. You're speaking of a limitation on advertising. Yeah. Can you share a bit more detail around that? Okay, so the logic is the type of information that we're dealing with is different from what Cambridge Analytica is dealing with. We're dealing with business level information. So it's impersonal information. It's not about you, it's about your business. So the information we'll collect from you is like, what are you producing and where are you located? 
So this information will not directly violate your personal privacy. This is business information that we're going to monetize. And another thing is the way we want to build the platform is data is valuable to us and to you. And we're going to integrate a way for, for paying you for your data. So you can opt in into adding additional data that we'll be paying you for. So you can add maybe your revenue and expense data and we'll pay you for that data because you generated that data. So that's, that's where we're playing. And I totally understand what you're saying about data and we're very cognizant of it. And we're not going to try and violate anyone's privacy. We're just going to keep it simple. It's about food. It's about business. It's not about you as a person. Awesome. Thank you, Tanaka. We all have a desire to have shelter, stability, and security. And there are a lot of investment opportunities out there for you to achieve these needs. But on top of them all, real estate still remains the most excellent and stable investment you can make. But unfortunately, the majority of people, you and I, cannot afford to buy into this asset class. Introducing property handles. We allow for fractional sales and title ownership in real estate for as little as $1. You can pretty much buy a quarter of a square meter in a property, an affordable housing project in Kenya and earn from rentals, capital appreciation and sales profit. There's a lot of competition in this, in this industry. But as property handle, we give you very low entry into the market and also we unlock liquidity right there from the start. You can go on a marketplace and trade your shares right there. We make money from commissions, from our sales, from facilities management, and also asset management. But the most important thing is this. In Africa, we're facing a dire housing need of in the tens of millions. And as it is, 15 million people move to cities in Africa every year. By 2050, we can't even have anywhere to stay. It's going to be one big slum. Are you going to work with me and the rest of Africa to house it? Thank you. I wanted to ask, how do you do your due diligence on which investments people should make and how do you provide that information to people? Okay, with every property that is listed, there is valuations that go on. Like right now in the real world, there's a, a valuation process that goes on. So in every city that we have a property that requests to be tokenized, we have people that should be in that city that we send proper uh, ex experienced valuers that go and evaluate the property, give us certain information on it. Then we get our, our people to work out how much you can make your return on investment and all of that over a period of time. My question is on title deeds. Yes. So currently in the country, title deeds are already a hard uh, process just to get simple title deeds without any complications at all. And then in the event that you are now doing a sectional title, what's the turnaround time? If I invested, how long does it take? And how are you solving some of the challenges that uh, we face in obtaining title deeds? Okay, uh, that one is a very big challenge, of course, but we have come up with a model such that with every property that is listed and tokenized, we create a special purpose vehicle in the form of a company. So when you buy, let's say one share, one share is equal to one square meter in the certain property. That means that you own one share in the property. So now the property is listed under that company. At the back end, you own shares in a company and also a property because you are a shareholder. Our company is an agricultural solution oriented company which is promoting smart farming in Zimbabwe by bringing in new agricultural technology solutions that can make farming more easier and also look good to the youth. We are solving these problems that are causing food, uh, low food production, lack of information and poor farming methods, poor farm management, high cost of production and climate change. We came up with four solutions, which is farm management, where we help uh, small-scale farmers that, cannot be that are not able to employ farm managers, and also uh, diaspora farmers that might want to invest back home uh, when they, if they, for example, if they have farms here, we also do the farm management. And also we've got a digital magazine that we are writing agricultural technology news so that we keep our farmer updated on what's happening in the agricultural world. We've also the TV show, which is the Smart Farmer Show, where we interview young innovators that are 
that uh, that uh, that if uh, uh, new agricultural solutions, so that we also inform our farmer about the what's happening in the in the world of agriculture. And we've got the farm tech shop, which is uh, we we are bringing in the new smart tools like uh, agricultural drones, soy testers to the farmer, so that farming can made can be made uh, simple. Our target market is 1.5 million small scale farmers in Zimbabwe, 5,000 diaspora farmers, 1 million young aspiring farmers. This is our competition. Okay, my question is, um, you know, farming is, is a serious business. Uh, so when you're saying that you're going to be managing a farm, mm. are you going to be in total control of all, everything that's going to be happening on that farm? Uh, let's say, for example, you talked about uh, someone who's, in, who's abroad and they're going to be giving you the money to run their farm. So my, my question is more targeted upon credibility. If, if I'm going to give you money, I need to know uh, what credit do you have to say that you can actually be perform this job to, to manage the farm. Thank you for the question. We've got qualified agronomists that are currently working in the farms. So we sign contract with you. You send the money, and then we do all the farm management. We take you from uh, planting, from planning, planting up to harvesting, and as well as securing marketing for your crops, so that you can have uh, where you can have uh, somewhere to sell your crops. So our we we have uh, deployed uh, so far. We have deployed twenty qualified agronomists that are working in the farms. Okay, great. So I don't see like the the aerobotics and the the you farm who also secure um, sort of buyers for your crop and then the aerobotics that use the drones as well and also have a data and analytics play to that is that any competition you've considered concerning that I think we will be the first guys to 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 have those smart tools uh, because uh, the the competition that we only have is uh, the agritech cassava and eco farmer which are bringing. Uh, the information to the farmers through the the, the eco farmer, the you know the text messages, and also agritech officers, which are the the the, the agritech officers that you all know the Madu one on the Madumen. But we 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 are now bringing the the new our so solution now is centered on we are bringing a ratio of one is to one, like a farmer a uh, is to a farmer we have one on one consulting service. With an uh, with an agronomist, whereas the agritech officers can have maybe hundred farmers pay per one agritech officer, which uh, which is not good. Did you know that you can actually live short or longer depending on the what type of food that you eat? The problem, people are sick. Uh, they are being attacked by various illnesses, and then there are some herbs which they are recommended to take, but then herbs are bitter. Nobody wants to chew ginger. Nobody wants to chew aloe vera. But then I've come up with a solution. I've made the new peanut butter with an edge, herbal and flavored, which is not only naturally healthy, but extraordinarily delicious. I'm working with young girls in my community, orphan girls, like I'm an orphan, but I don't believe in donations. I decided to make this product a social innovation so that I work with uh, girls in my community so that when we manufacture this, we are actually empowering each other and encourage each other to know that it's still possible to be on your own financially as a lady, orphan or not. I started commercializing in 2019. I've sold over 1,000 bottles at the ZITF and uh, I got orders from South Africa, Belarus, China and UK from there. And the market, uh, we are marketing the product in Chitungwiza, in hospitals, for a market, and we are targeting uh, boarding schools and churches. Also, the competition, we have got competitors from uh, the big brands, which have already been known, the Mama's Peanut Butter, Win Willard's, and Energy Peanut Butter. They ask, uh, we need to have a SARS licensing so that we can expand more. Thank you. I'd like to know more about what you have in your peanut butter that you say gives you the edge compared to the others, and why, if you have um, more stuff in your peanut butter, com why are you listing mamas and the others as competitors? Thank you for that. We are listing mamas as the competitors because uh, they've uh, always provided peanut butter. That's the brands that's known. 
So we have to compete with them and to tell people uh, what's different about our peanut butter so that they can actually buy. But for now, they actually prefer these well-known brands. And as for the why our peanut butter is special, there's no peanut butter with Moringa. We haven't heard about it. Mine is the first one to be produced like that in Zimbabwe. So we use Moringa, we use garlic, all those herbs and organic stuff that people are hesitating to eat. I'm using that to make the special peanut butter so that they don't have to chew, which is bitter, but they, they can just spread and use as toppings. It can as well be used as icing on cakes, the peanut butter. Great pitch. Love your story. Empowering the women in your community. Absolutely love it. So I have a question. Is it still peanut butter then if you're adding other ingredients? Because you talked about health before and and um, how people get sick and stuff. So I, I actually thought you were saying that you're mixing all these things together and they're curing the sicknesses and then it and peanut butter is also in there. So is it still peanut butter? And also, can mama's peanut butter just add ginger and then you're out of the game? It's still peanut butter because we use various nuts, the baobab nuts, uh, the peanuts, and also other special nuts to make the peanut butter. So what makes peanut butter is the nuts. So we use the ingredients, the nuts. So the other thing, uh, mamas cannot just copy this uh, organic formula because it's not just about the mixing. It's a formula that I sat down and invented. So it's new. <laughs> Zimbabweans, both in South Africa and in Zimbabwe, struggle to find cost-effective, convenient, reliable, and fast ways of sending money between the two countries. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Reginald Chetu, and I'm here to present to you a solution to these problems, Bitcash. Bitcash is an online platform, peer-to-peer -peer based, that's bi-directional, and allows people to send money to and on behalf of each other using their local currencies across geographic borders. Over the last 18 months that we've been online, we've managed to help over 5,000 people send more than 500,000 to their loved ones back home. We make our money from the difference in price on the fungible digital asset that exists on our platform that we trade in the two markets. We know we've barely scratched the surface. Uh, there's over one million Zimbabweans that are currently living and working in South Africa. And these guys send over half a billion in remittances each year. There's therefore high potential for growth and to scale the product. And you can also replicate this model throughout Africa. We differ in that our platform is blockchain based, peer to peer based, and we've introduced electronic money in the last mile. This dramatically cuts down the time and the costs that are usually related to when you're sending money across borders. And we are asking for advisory services, as well as 500,000 in funding, to help to scale our infrastructure and to improve uh, on our market uh, acquisition. Thank you. What are your charges for sending money through Bitcash? And uh, at the same time, what are your thresholds or brackets for sending the money? And um, when you're sending the money, do you also have those usual requirements for either identification so that at least there's accountability on the part of the sender and the receiver can track the money if anything happens to it? Firstly, t today's uh, current rate is uh, when someone sends 870 rand from South Africa, their uh, beneficiary uh, back here receives 1,000 RTGS. And the other way around, um, if you want to send money to South Africa, uh, you, if you send 1,000 RTGS, your recipient in South Africa gets uh, 790. And uh, secondly, uh, thresholds. We have, uh, when you're a normal user, uh, we limit your daily transfer to uh, 5,000 uh, Rand in a day and uh, 25,000 in a month. Uh, we're currently just uh, self-regulated. So these are actually the, the, the recommendations uh, from uh, the different uh, uh, regulatory bodies. And also, so we've come up with uh, our own uh, KYC policy. So we, we, uh, we've got a facial recognition that we're going to introduce. And uh, we've, uh, now for now, we just uh, have people taking a photo of their ID card, their passports, or driver's license, and matching it with, uh, with a mugshot so that we, we, we relate uh, that information. And then we also have proof of residence uh, as a doc another documentation that needs to be added. You converted the figures for me. You didn't give me the charges. You said 870, you get 1,000, 1,000, you get 790. You converted. What are the charges? Uh, that's because we don't charge anything. What you see on, on the platform is uh, what, you, uh, what you pay and what your recipient gets. Okay.
So we're gonna take 15, 20 minute break and give you guys time to vote. And then we'll find out who the winner is. Okay, so drum roll. And the winner is... Chikafu! Woo! Okay, uh, so first of all, I'd like to thank everyone that voted for us. This is actually the first award that we've won, and it's pretty big for us. Like I was telling you, thank you, thank you. The Google Cloud credits are really important to what we're trying to build, so thank you to everyone that voted for us. And I promise you, five years from now, you'll remember this day. This company's gonna grow, so thank you. Thank you.